Hi, my name is Francesco and I'm a mechanical engineer here at Tufts. Today I'm going to show you how we made this robotic grip. This video will take you through the design process, prototyping, manufacturing, quality control and finally of course testing the gripper with a motor. Every project starts with the design stage. For a gripper like this we need to ask ourselves what is important to make it function properly. One of the most important things is to be able to control the motion effectively. Therefore, we need to pay close attention to the correct tolerances. If tolerances are too tight, there will be too much friction, or worse, it would be impossible to assemble the parts. On the contrary, if they are not tight enough, the motion will be too loose and not precise. During prototyping, we had to adjust tolerances a few times to get them right. You will see it when we go over the prototyping phase in a bit. Let's talk about finishes now. There are a few things to keep in mind regarding finishes. In some cases, it's important for the gripper to look good as an outward-facing object. And of course, there are the functional aspects of the finish. For instance, maybe the parts need to have a foot-grade finish, or you want them to be wear-resistant. At Tubbs, we offer many surface finishes, both cosmetic and functional. For this gripper, I chose as machined and anodizing type 2 because it looks great. Lastly, let's talk about materials. For a gripper like this, you will most likely want a lightweight but strong material to keep inertia forces low. Most robotic grippers are made from aluminum or titanium because of their lightweight and good mechanical properties. At Tabs, we offer a wide range of aluminum and titanium grades to choose from. Go check them out! After the design stage, we moved on to prototyping. This allowed us to see if the design was working and correct any mistakes. In our case, we used FDM 3D printing because it's an affordable and fast option for prototyping. Let's have a look at the prototyping process now. This is the whole development of the project. Um, there are three 3D printed prototypes and uh, the, final, the final parts, um, CNC aluminum. So this was the, the first prototype, uh, 3D printed uh, um, in red. And uh, these are the, 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 two, the two plates, and this feature is meant to uh, move the part manually. So basically the part were uh, like this, and uh, yeah, the gear is in this way, and the columns are supposed to be in the two plates to maintain the same distance between them. And uh, basically there is the screw here and the nut there. And uh, basically, this feature was meant to move the parts manually, like this, okay. So basically, this very first design, this very first prototype, was meant to check the, uh, the distances, uh, the proportions, and the, the movement, the, the motion of the, of the prototype. So this was the very first one, and um, we realized maybe it was a bit too big, uh, because we uploaded the design on, uh, on the platform, hubs.com, and we realized that, okay, maybe it's slightly too expensive. Uh, what about uh, redesigning it um, slightly smaller, but um, uh, with basically the same design uh, and better proportions. So we moved from design number one in red to design number two in blue. Design number two is basically uh, the same concept, the same idea but with uh, many differences. So there is not anymore uh, a long feature here to move it manually because we started thinking about uh, a real motor in order to, to move the parts. So basically here uh, there are not any more uh, holes but there are features to support the, the parts. Okay, so this is the way uh, to assemble it. Uh, the columns again in between the two plates uh, here screws and on the underside there are uh, nuts. So basically this is the, the, the second prototype uh, in blue. So it, uh, the, the proportions in my opinion are slightly better. Uh, it is slightly smaller, uh, less expensive and it works. Okay. So yeah, that was the second prototype. And in the second prototype we uh, we tested also the, uh, the position of the, of the supports and the nuts and the screws and after the second prototype we realized that it was better to move the supports in the plate. So from uh, prototype number two we moved to prototype number three. 
the proportions are basically the same, but uh, um, the supports have been moved accordingly to the previous uh, considerations. And with support number three, we added the, the pins to uh, fit the motor. We also 3D printed the motor, a mock-up of the motor with the real dimensions. And then we, uh, we plugged in the motor and there is also this, this feature in order to, to have the motor uh, still while operating. So this is the motor, uh, this is the board to control the motor and we also purchased an Arduino to uh, control the motor. So the Arduino through a, a USB cable can be controlled by, by the laptop and we are gonna do that right now. The motor is controlled through uh, the motor controller and Arduino and through a very, very simple code, it is possible to control the motion of the two parts. So this is an example with uh, certain parameters, but of course the parameters can be changed. So uh, the range of motion can also be wider, for example. So now I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna restore to the zero position uh, because the prototype is very simple. So there is no uh, sensor, there is no feedback loop and I'm gonna change the parameters in order to have a wider motion. And that's it. Once happy with our design, we ordered the parts through hubs and I will quickly show you how easy that is. To order the parts, I just go to hubs.com I click on Get Instant Quote and upload my files. Now you see all the items are listed here and I received an instant price. If we look at the specifications, we see CNC machining selected and that's correct. I want these parts anodized, so I go to Change Specifications and I select the desired surface finish. I want as machined and anodized type 2 for these ones. Moving on to color, I want gold for some parts. So I return to the quote builder and quickly do the same with the rest. Now all the parts are ready to be ordered. You can also change the lead time here and have the components manufactured locally with Ups Local in Europe, where we are now, or in the US if you are there. We will stick with global and this lead time and we order our parts now. So today the parts that we ordered have arrived and let's check them out. Is the PO. These parts are anodized gold. And they look amazing. And these parts are anodized. The parts look good, but here at Hubs they have to go through quality inspection for a thorough check. And since the dimensions are very important for these parts, I wanted QC to take a careful look at them. Here you see my colleague Daniele checking them visually and double checking if everything is in accordance with the PO. He pays close attention to see if there are any scratches or color variations and if the parts look exactly like in the 3D model. Everything looks good, so the visual inspection is passed. Now he's doing a dimensional check and this feature is crucial for the grip to work. The dimensions were good and exactly as expected, so the parts passed QC. The parts passed QC, which means it's time to check them out with the motor and see if the gripper functions properly. I already assembled the parts, as you can see here. Now I'm setting the right voltage for the motor, which is 12 volts, in order to have proper torque. Checking the screws, that are going through 3D printed columns between the two plates. Now checking the alignment and the tolerances. Everything looks good, so let's check if the software works properly.
Everything looks great and works as expected. So I'm really, really happy. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it uh, interesting. Uh, please leave a comment if you want more content like this about robotics or about other interesting applications. Until next time, stay curious.